Hello students, looking at current affairs for 1st April, the news items picked up from the Hindu newspaper are these 13, we look at them in detail. The first one, IIT Madras converts petroleum waste toluene into useful product. So, a two-member team of IIT Madras has used platinum nanocatalyst to successfully convert petroleum waste product toluene into benzoic acid. Benzoic acid is actually used as a food preservative and is also medicine for fungal and bacterial infection. So this is the process. This is science and tech related news which was actually covered on Sunday, 31st March news. So important news from Sunday is also picked up for Monday. So here you can see toluene was converted into benzoic acid through selective and controlled oxidation in the presence of a catalyst. Catalyst is something which, which does not actually get converted but facilitates a chemical reaction. So, it does not itself get changed. So, this is the platinum nanoparticle which has been used as a catalyst and generally organic reactions are, used, are carried out using organic solvents but in this case the solvent used was water. So, it was environmental friendly too. So, this is an environmental friendly process which converts toluene into benzoic acid a useful product. So, that is there. And organic solvents also make the process expensive with toxic waste. So, that has been uh, eliminated. So, green oxidant has been used. Even this uh, uh, oxidant which has been used is a green oxidant. So, it is it is 70 percent aqueous third butyl hydroperoxide. So, again you do not need to remember these names but at least you should know toluene is a petroleum waste product. Second that benzoic acid is a useful product and research in India which has been taking place. So, you should know about some research in India which is covered dominantly. Also, it is said the yield of benzoic acid in this process varies from 68 to 96 percent depending on whether the toluene used is electron deficient or electron rich. So, this is the development, the gist of it is covered here, so what we just discussed. Then next is release list of convicted officials, CIC orders custom department. So, the Central Information Commission which is the highest authority under RTI Act has been established under RTI Act. It has directed the customs department of uh, Tamil Nadu here. You can see it was the chief commissioner of customs of uh, Punjab of Amritsar. He actually an RTI request had gone to him and the RTI request was seeking information on officers caught convicted or jailed for smuggling over the last 10 years. So, the custom officials being caught. So, this detail of convicted or jailed officials as such was not provided. The case, the central commission officer, which is mandated to be appointed in every government authority. So, the CPIO of uh, the customs department of Amritsar responded by saying that the data requested pertained to personal information of employees and hence could not be provided. So, the case went in appeal. In the appeal, the CPIO said that no such list of convicted officers was maintained by the department. So, another reason was given for not providing the information. So, of course, it went into appeal and at the Central Information Commission level, the highest authority now, there is State Information Commission and then the Central Information Commission. The CIC, the Central Information Commission, Vimal Julka, he has said that information should be disclosed voluntarily for the sake of transparency and accountability in public authority. And in this case also, it has said that the customs department should make public a list of officers caught red-handed smuggling gold and heroin and other for other illegal activities. So, this list has to be made public. Also, it said that make public the details of officers convicted or jailed for giving false state or evidence also. So, it says that such data cannot be considered as personal information and should not be uh, held back. It should be made available in public interest. So, this is the ruling. Whether it is complied with or not is another matter. Then next is Culling begins after bird flu outbreak in Katak. So, here in Orisha, we are seeing mass culling of birds, means killing of birds is taking place after sample collected from a state run duck breeding center turned tested positive for a deadly strain of avian influenza, that is bird flu H5N1 virus. So, this virus spreads from bird to bird and it can be harmful for humans and it can be fatal can lead to death. So, blood samples of people living within the radius of 10 km of the locality who consume egg and bird meat, have consumed egg or bird meat over the week will also be collected and tested. And it was actually, it started when the center started witnessing deaths of at least 10 to 15 birds every day over the past 10 days. So, then samples were sent to several laboratories within Orisha and outside too and the results came positive for H5N1 avian influenza and mass culling of birds has now been initiated in Odisha. So, 
this is regarding H5N1. You should know avian influenza was a deadly outbreak some time ago too. So you can see countries uh, where uh, wild birds killing had started and countries with humans and poultry, uh, you know, killed by it. So it has resulted in death of humans also in these countries. So this is China, right? Egypt. Okay, this one. Then next is. Then this is regarding H1N1 which has been prominently in news to swine flu and this is H5N1 bird flu. So here you can see the difference where do they, the site of infection is shown. So site of infection is the entire nasal cavity, the windpipe as such and the, uh, as such being affected. And in uh, H5N1 the bird flu it is the lungs which are getting affected you can see. So different sites of infection. H1N1 is seasonal and this is the bird flu H5N1. And of course, this easily spreads H1N1, and but it is not fatal. It's rarely fatal, means it will not result in death. And this spreads slowly, but it is often fatal and result in death. So that is the avian flu, H5N1. Right? So it became endemic in many parts of Southeast Asia, and uh, you know, a highly pathogenic strain of it started spreading globally too. So in 2013, World Health Organization had confirmed 630 human cases. And uh, the case, and there were 375 people killed since 2003 because of H5N1 bird flu. And there is no sustained human to human transmission which has been you know, registered, but there is some evidence of limited human to human transmission of the virus. So it spreads from birds to humans. And it is said several H5N1 vaccines have also been developed and approved and stockpiled in many countries too. Then next is. Supreme Court suspends eco clearance for the international airport in Goa. So the, the Supreme Court has now cancelled the environment impact assess, uh, environmental clearance which has been provided by the Environment Ministry in Goa for the new international airport in Goa at Mopa. So the environment clearance has been suspended because actually the environment impact assessment process which was followed was not uh, up to the mark, it had flaws, errors in it, and you know, discrepancies in it. And it was uh, stated by the state of Goa and the center, and even the concessioner, it was highlighted that the need of a new airport is there and to, to accommodate the increasing volume of passengers. And they had urged the Supreme Court to disregard the flaws in the environment impact assessment process. They said that the new airport is a matter of policy and should be allowed. But Supreme Court has now suspended the environment clearance, which has been. So, due process has to be followed. So, that has been upheld by the Supreme Court. So, you should know about EIA, Environment Impact Assessment too. And this is regarding the Mopa Airport, which is proposed to be established in Goa. So, it will be built on design, build, finance, operate and transfer basis. So, there are different models for infrastructure development. This is DBFO2. Means it will be designed by the concessioner, the, it will be built by it, financed by it, operated by it and finally transferred to the government. Here you can see the details provided about its potential too. And this is EIA, Environment Impact Assessment. So it's a legal procedure in which project developer is required to provide environmental information to a consenting body so that this information can be used for better informed decision making. So it's actually done by the concessioner. The one who has been given the project will do this EIA process so that Environment Ministry can give it grant. So usually it also involves publication and public comment uh, disclosure too. So, it's an EIA report which has to be submitted and the procedure has to be followed which in this case we saw had flaws. Then next is MiG-27 crashes in Jodhpur but pilot ejects to safety. So, this was a MiG-27 fighter aircraft of Indian Air Force which crashed in Jodhpur and Rajasthan. So, pilot reported, pilot ejected and uh, as such but they reported engine problems before ejecting. So this is there. Earlier too we have seen this result, this does not result, did not result in any damage to any person or property on ground neither to the crew. But we have seen earlier fatal incidents of Indian Air Force. A series of accidents have taken place in March 2019 and uh, it was the MiG-27 fleet also which saw several accidents in 2019. So actually MiG-27 is the last of the Russian origin jets that in the process of being phased out. So in March 2019 we saw a training mission from Jaisalmer crashing at Pokhran range in Rajasthan. In earlier in September 2018, a MiG-27 crashed again in Jodhpur region. So, 
such incidents have taken place. The pilot ejected safely in both these instances. Uh, but in uh, earlier also, IF has lost at least 10 personnel in crashes. So, March 2019, after the Balakot airstrike, also we saw MI-17 helicopter crashing in Jammu and Kashmir and all six personnel on board and a civilian on ground dying. And also, it was said preliminary investigation showed that it was shot down by ground-based air defense system of the Indian Air Force itself in case of mistaken fire. And also, just ahead of Aero India in Bengaluru in Feb 2019, two Hawk advanced jet trainers practicing aerobatics crashed into each other, killing one pilot. So, this incident has also taken place. Then next is, seized by 14,000 crore assets, seized rupees 14,000 crore assets of an offender. So, this is what Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced in, uh, in an interview that, uh, and he did not name the offender, but he said that uh, uh, where 9,000 crore fraud was committed, a man who committed 9,000 crore fraud and left the country, his assets worth 14,000 crore has been seized. So, this has been announced as such or stated as such by the Prime Minister. So, of course, he did not name like Vijay Malia, but Vijay Malia tweeted saying that the highest authority has confirmed full recovery, then why BJP leaders targeting him? He, say, he claims that he is the poster boy for the Fugitive Economic Offenders Act 2018. So, the Prime Minister also highlighted how this act has made it possible for the government because this act gives the powers to the government which can seize all domestic and foreign assets of anyone designated a Fugitive Economic Offender. So, Vijay Mali actually became the first person to be officially designated as fugitive economic offender and his assets have been seized. Vijay Mali on, on the other hand says that he has been a UK resident since 1992. So, still it has been claimed that he ran away. So, whatever be the matter, this is regarding the fugitive economic offenders bill you should know about. So, when offenses are worth 100 crore or more, then the measures in this bill are mentioned. A person against whom an arrest warrant had been issued has been issued in respect of a scheduled offence, means an economic offence which has been listed in the schedule to this bill, then and he has left India to avoid criminal prosecution or has been abroad and is refusing to return to India to face criminal prosecution, then he can be declared a fugitive economic offender. So, this is the condition laid down. So, in such a case, it actually, uh, it actually allows the government to seize his assets, as we just discussed, in India as well as abroad. A special forum also has been created for expeditious confiscation of the proceeds of crime in India or abroad. So, this is the detail you can see. He became the, Vijay Malia became the first Indian to be declared so. Then next is, Saudis hacked Bezos phone. So, this is a security consultant of Jeff Bezos, uh, Bezos of uh, Amazon. So, he, he has accused the Saudi government of gaining unauthorized access to Amazon CEO's phone. So, it says that they are trying to harm the world's richest man. Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon, is actually the world's richest man now. He owns the Washington Post too. And recently, the Saudi Arabia tiff with the Washington Post happened when Jamal Khashoggi, who, is act, who was a columnist in the Washington Post, was uh, murdered in the Saudi embassy. So, the Washington Post had aggressively reported on this and had stated that it was the Saudi Crown Prince who was involved in this. So, this happened in Turkey, in the Saudi Embassy in Turkey in October 2018. So, in January 2019 also, uh, the case happened when Mr. Bezos announced he and his wife divorcing. So, at that time, it was said that uh, uh, a publishing a house actually said that he was romantically involved with a former Los Angeles TV anchor and it was claimed that there are some embarrassing photos of Jeff Bezos with her available which which now has been claimed that it was taken directly from his phone and he also claimed that he has been extor you know, this mean facing extortion and blackmail. So that is the whole case. So it is said Saudis are involved in this and they are targeting Jeff Bezos. The next is Arab leaders condemn US move on Golan. So Arab leaders now have come together and they have criticized US move uh, in which we have seen how Golan Heights which actually belongs to Syria and has been annexed or uh, you know captured by Israel in the 1967 war. So Israel's sovereignty over it has been recognized by US. US President Donald Trump announced so. So now Arab leaders who have actually been divided by regional rivalries have all come together and have said that uh, this is highly condemned 
and Saudi Arabia, which is a close ally of USA too, says that we absolutely reject any measures affecting state sovereignty over Golan Heights. So there are regional differences. Iran and Saudi Arabia don't see eye to eye. So that is there. Then even there's a war going on in Yemen, uh, led by Saudi Arabia. There's unrest in Algeria, Sudan. However, they came together on this matter. So this is Golan Heights. You should know on which uh, Israel has control now. This is UN designated area too. So this is area of separation as such. So the neighbors of Israel also you should know. Above lies Lebanon, Syria, Jordan below. So this is the location. And this is the West Bank, the region which should be part of Palestinian nation if it is formed. Along with Gaza Strip of course. Then next is North Korea says embassy raid was a terror attack. So actually North Korean embassy in Spain was uh, saw a break in in March 2019 and now North Korean foreign ministry has said that it was a grave terrorist attack. So it is anti-North Korean group which is said to be behind the raid and it is said that US FBI supported it. So this has come to the fore now. So you can see an illegal intrusion into the and occupation of a diplomatic mission and an act of theft are a grave breach of state sovereignty and flagrant violation of international law. So that's what North North Korea's foreign ministry representative said. Then next is Slovaks elect first woman president. So this is Zuzana Kaputova. She has been elected as Slovakia's first woman president. So this was actually she has been elected as the president while the government which has the majority in parliament belongs to the uh, another party. So, she is not from the ruling party and she has been elected as president with 58.4% of the votes. So, she is a 45 year environmentalist, environmental lawyer and she got a clear victory over the ruling party's candidate. So, she has been an anti graft activist and is expected to provide a check on government whose image has been tarnished after the murder of a journalist in 2018. So, this is Slovakia in Europe. So, women being you know, elected to the top post. Uh, there are these other women heads of state in Europe being shown. You can see Germany's Angela Merkel. She became the Germany's first woman chancellor when she was elected in 2005. She has also led Europe's biggest economy, Germany, ever since. She has won a fourth four year term in 2018. Then this is Zuzana Kapatova, presently in news of Slovakia. Then even in Estonia, we have a woman leader. She became the first woman president of Estonia. This is Croatian leader. She was uh, elected in 2015. First woman to be elected president by universal suffrage in Croatia. Then Luciana also has a woman leader. Malta, Romania and of course in Britain, Theresa May. She became Britain's second wo woman PM after Margaret Thatcher in 2016. And it was after David Cameron resigned following the referendum vote to leave the European Union that she became the Prime Minister. Then there are other European uh, countries that have women leaders to mention here. You can see these are non-EU members, non-EU countries like Norway, Iceland, Georgia, Serbia with women leaders. The next is Asian Origin Gang funded Al-Qaeda through tax fraud. So this is about a British Asian gang of fraudsters who it is said may have been involved in misusing billions of pounds of British taxpayers money to fund terrorist networks in Pakistan and Afghanistan. So it is said at they sent 1% of their gains in this elaborate tax fraud to Al Qaeda in Pakistan and Afghanistan where madrasas, training camps and training other training terrorist activities were funded. So this is information held by secret as a secret intelligence by MI5 of UK. So it states that some of the money reached Pakistani compound that housed Al Qaeda's mastermind of Osama bin Laden. This it is said to be around 80 million pounds, which is supposed to be have been funneled into this terror groups. So this is regarding UK intelligence agencies too. So what we just spoke of the famous MI5 and uh, the home security. Mm -hmm. Yes, then there is secret intelligence service MI6 for intelligence from outside threats. Then next is date fixed to execute drug offenders. So in Sri Lanka there has been a four decade long 
moratorium on capital punishment means death penalty so since last few years there has been no death penalty announced by the sri lankan authorities the courts but now president matripala shrisena has said that the death penalty would be resorted to for those convicted of drug trafficking so he said this is to uh, part of his resolve to eradicate the problem of illegal drug trafficking and he says he will brave any challenge that might come his way so he also says the date has been fixed to execute these convicted drug traffickers so at least 25 people are said to have been convicted for drug trafficking here this has become a huge menace there is an underground network which is also being targeted by police special task force there are arrest seizures taking place frequently so this is regarding death penalty as such so the highest number of death sentences are undertaken in china executions take place then comes iran iraq saudi arabia and us so these are the top 5 executioners then the last news is tough times for mbfcs so this is regarding non banking finance companies so how mbfcs shares in bonds issuance and in commercial papers how they have been faring you can see they had taken a dip in october again in december and they have been lying low now and this is regarding share of nbfcs in incremental banks that has also taken a dip and all this is in the context of ilnfs crisis infrastructure lease and finance authority uh, no? agency so this is regarding that how interest rates have also shot high for nbfcs so the interest rate which they have to pay is also going high so that is it these are the news items thank you